Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever and whenever you are. My name is Benjamin, and welcome to another Godot tutorial. This is part four to my brick break or whatever you want to call it uh, series. And today, uh, first of all, I want to say thanks to a lot of the Godot community and their support. And I also want to say thanks to some of the people, since I'm still kind of new to Godot, I, I still make mistakes sometimes, so I really appreciate the feedback that people have given me and the little tips for how you can do things slightly better. So I'm hoping to integrate some of those. The first thing that I want to teach you guys, and something that I learned because of the comments, uh, if we go into our scenes, sorry, if we go into our mini scenes and open up the ball scene right here, and then we open up our script. I learned that we don't need to apply delta here. Now, the reason we don't need to apply delta is because we're actually only updating, because we're setting the vo velocity right here. And so when you set the velocity, go dot will automatically, well, there's, there's a couple reasons. Number one, we're getting the velocity. And and so we're setting the velocity right here and Godot is going to automatically apply delta to the velocity of that node once we've set it. Uh, at the user who helped me with this, his name was Pete275 and you can actually find his comment in my last video. It was really helpful and I really appreciate it. So we don't need to apply delta because this only, this only happens when we hit the paddle in that single frame. And so delta is not going to be really that relevant in a single frame like this. Uh, which is partially why my method still works is because delta doesn't really affect it that much here because it's only a single frame but also why delta is not necessary at all in this case because delta is how long it took to process the last frame and and the Godot engine is going to apply delta to whatever the velocity of the node is every single frame as it updates the position of the node. So we don't need delta. So hopefully that explanation was okay. Uh, I'm still learning to understand and grasp the concept myself. But yeah, because Godot, because it's the velocity of this node, obviously if we set the velocity of a node in the ready function, right? We're not even going to have access to delta. And so there's no way we could apply delta to it. But the node will continue to move throughout every frame of the game. And so uh, the, the engine needs to apply delta to this, the velocity of that node each frame to make it move smoothly, uh, no matter how fast the computer runs the frame rate. So hopefully that helps us run the game and make sure that our speeds are good because we did... <laughs> We did multiply our, our speed up and stuff by 100, and we don't need that anymore. So let's do a max speed of 400 maybe, and a speed up of 4. Let's see how that works. Let's run the game and try it. Okay, that seems to work pretty good, changing those values again. If you want to increase the speed up or max speed, you can. Let's just make sure that it's working. I'm gonna print the I'm gonna print the velocity. Print velocity. And just see every time we hit the paddle and kind of see how much it increases. No, actually we want to print the speed. Uh, speed. Let's see. String s speed plus speed up. That's probably what we actually want to print. 200, 290, 294. You can see it is increasing by the four that we set it to increase by. And it will get faster and faster. Four seems pretty slow, so maybe you'll want to do a slightly faster one. because it's pretty easy. But you guys can decide that. That's a game design decision you guys can make. Uh, you could make speed up a var and export it so that you don't have to modify it here. 
and I want to show you guys how to do that. Someone actually requested that, so let's make speed up a var instead of a const right here. So we'll do var speed up, and I'm gonna change it so that it's not it's not um, all capitalized anymore. I want to add that there, change that there. We'll remove the print here. Actually, you know what? Let's leave that, and we'll just change that to speed up. Now we change it to a variable, which uh, makes it so that that doesn't really do much for us right at this moment. But what we can do is export it. And I think it goes before export var. Okay, so now it's set to four. But now if we go back to our editor, so come back into 2D mode, and we click on the ball right here, you can see speed up right here is a variable. We've exported that variable into the editor, and we can modify it right here. And you can see right when we modify it, we get a little uh, circular kind of reset button right here. If we press that, it'll set it back to its default value of four, which is what it is in the editor. So, but we can increase this just in the editor to play with it and not have to worry about going into the code to see how that's gonna affect it. You can see it speeds up quite a bit faster now. And the game will get difficult more quickly. Ooh, almost missed that one. I was I was looking down at the speeds to see how fast it was getting. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so now you know how to export a variable so it shows up in the editor over here. So that's a nice little trick you can do. Export var, really cool. So the next thing that we're gonna do that was also requested. Oh, one other thing I wanna do is I wanna mention uh, uh, the person that actually introduced me to Godot is named Edward and he's doing a Flappy Bird tutorial series and I'll put a link in this video to that because it's really good as well. I think he's only done a few videos so far, kind of like me, but he's he already knows the engine pretty well and it's a great series, you should check it out. So I'll link that in the description. Um, but also one of the things that he taught me that I wanted to mention is that uh, you see how we have our bricks here and how we've got all of them locked? We've locked, and maybe it's in our brick, uh, yeah, it's inside of our brick scene right here, mini scene. We've got all of these nodes locked because we don't want to be able to accidentally, because what happens, if you remember, if we unlock those and you click on it, sometimes you don't get the actual brick node, right? We just grab the collision shape, which is not what we want to move. So... But instead of locking all of the child nodes, you can click on the parent node and click this little icon right here. And it just makes it so that the children are not selectable in the editor. And it puts that little icon there. And now we never have to worry about accidentally grabbing the collision shape, but we also don't have to try and go through and lock each individual child. So that's kind of a neat little trick I wanted to show you guys that I learned from Edward. Now, the last thing I'm going to show you guys how to do is I'm we're going to put in a, we're going to put in a score. So click on your world node right here, and add a new node, and we're going to add a label. And a label is just basically text that's in your game. I'm just going to stretch it out so that it's kind of here in the corner, and. I'm going to set some text. If you come over here, you can see there's a text icon. We'll just do score zero. There we go, we've got a simple label. But currently, uh, there's no actual score in our game. It's just a label that says score, and there's no way to change this label. So we're gonna click on our world node, and we're gonna add a script to it. So click this little icon right here. Choose the path that you want it to go to. I want to make sure mine goes into scripts. And I'm just going to name it world. World.gd. And then click create. And I'm going, I'm going to get rid of all of this right here because we don't need it. So we're going to set a score. Score equals zero and we want it to be a var 
Now in Godot, it's possible to create your own setter and getter functions. Now a setter and getter function is, they're useful because you can detect when a value has changed, when a variable has changed, and or when someone gets access to a variable and then run a little bit of code depending on that. So what we want to do is we want to detect when the score has changed. So if the score has gone up or if the score has gone down and we want to modify this, the label that we have right here. In fact, we need to rename this real quick. So name it score. So we want to modify, I'm going to click on the world script again to come back in here. We want to modify that labels text whenever the score changes. Now the benefit of using a set get function is that you're not running it every single frame of the game. You only run that when the score changes. So it's really efficient. It's a really efficient way to do it. So after you've set the variable like this, you write set get and that's a keyword that tells Godot that you want to create either a setter or a getter function and you can leave out uh, either one so you don't have to use both of them so I think normally they're separated by a comment so set score comma get score let's make sure that works okay we don't get an error so I'm pretty sure that's how you do it if you wanted to do only set score you could just do this if you wanted to do only get score you just I think you just leave the comma there I'm pretty sure that's how you do it this is in the documentation uh, under the Godot language for GD script. And so it talks a little bit more about that. But we're just going to do the set score because we don't need a get score. Okay. And so now we actually create the function. Function set score. Now make sure it's named the same thing as this right here because this tells Godot what function to use. Okay. Oh, and then if you're doing a set score, uh, it always has an argument, which is the new value. So value. So that's going to be the new score value. So then inside of here, you can overwrite it so that it doesn't actually change it, but we want it to change it. So we're gonna say score equals value, right? Because that's obvious. Whenever you set the score, you wanna make sure to update it. But now we're going to get access to our score label right there. So we're going to say get node score dot set text. And now we're going to set the text and we're going to set it to score semicolon or sorry, colon plus string score. So we're just updating the text so that it will say score with a space and then have the actual score number. And we use str to convert that number into a string so that we can add it to this string because you can only add two strings together, concatenate. So now every time the score value changes, it will run this code as well. And it will set the text for this score to be the new score. Really cool. Okay, we're gonna save this. And then we're going to go into our uh, ball scene again and come into the text. And we need to add, a, uh, when we hit the brick, we need to add some more score. So we're gonna say, first of all, we need to get access to the game node because it has the score variable, right? Or the world node. So we're gonna say get node. And if you wanna get access to a node, you can, that's, uh, we could say get parent because no, I don't know what we parented this, whether this ball is part of the scene or not. So just to be safe, we're going to use the root. So the root node is actually the invisible node that you can't see that's before the game node that, or the world node that we created. So root and then world, and that will get access to the world node. And then we're going to say dot score plus equals five, okay? So what are we doing? We're changing the score value. This right here, this change, will make our script, our world script run. 
this little set function. It will make it run. Okay, so now we can run the game and you can see whenever we hit a brick it will update that label that we created with the new score. And wow, that was crazy. Kind of hit the ball from underneath. So there you go. That's how you can use a setter and a getter to access a label. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, be sure and like, favorite, and subscribe. And I will talk to you guys later.